All right, with us now on Spotlight and South Line are two members of a support group. It's called Mind Over Myelin Sheath, a multiple sclerosis support group. And with me is Suzanne and Sandy. Thank you for being on Spotlight and South Line. Thank you for having us. Yeah, sure. Appreciate it. Well, we just spent the next last few minutes um, educating me on the support group and some of the medical aspects of this. And so I just learned a lot. So we're going to talk a little bit more about it. And uh, but I want to start with this. So this is a support group that we're that we're talking about today and so I'm gonna hop right into kind of a, uh, a, a kind of a heavy side of this so uh, and we'll get to more about you know the disease and, and all that in a minute but how does one you know all of a sudden say you know what I, I, I want to join this support group I want to join this group that has a similar thing that I have that's, I can imagine that's gonna be a, a tough first step Although not a first step per se, right. but a step. It's a big step. Okay. It's a very That's big what I was step. thinking. Yeah. Like when Mary first um, established the group, I was one of the original members, um, along with a friend of mine who lived nearby, and um, it was very much something that we wanted and looked forward to going to. Yeah. Um, and it's it's just such a great thing to be around other people who have similar issues that you feel comfortable enough to talk about it with them without right. feeling judged, without having to um, convince them that you have those symptoms or that you have the disease. So um, it's, it's, um, it's an awesome thing. And everybody is very supportive of each other, regardless of what your issues are. Yeah. Because they're also, we're all just very comfortable with each other from the get-go. And that's what you need, right? As part of a support group. Yes. Right? Yep. I know I, my personal experience was I was hesitant to join. I yeah. felt like I needed a support group. Yeah. Um, and when I heard about it, um, I was hesitant to join because I am not um, physically disabled. Um, and a lot of times in social situations, if I'm too tired or my fatigue is too bad and I have to cancel plans. Right. Friends sometimes are not understanding, and you're just tired. Take a nap, take yeah. an Advil, right. you'll be fine. But that's not that doesn't work, and yeah. that's not helpful. So, um, joining a support group and knowing that there were people that were going to be there for me, even when I I was nervous to walk in because I walk on my own free will, yeah. and there are people in our group who need assistance yeah. walking and getting around. Right. So I didn't want them to be like, you're not sick, why are you here? Yeah. But that's not what I met at all. Yeah. I met- And they knew and, that though, yes, right? Yeah. Yes, and I met a group of people who um, welcomed me with open arms and we've become very, very good friends and we totally support each other. Yeah. I was gonna ask, and you touched on it, and you know, do you remember your first meeting, the first time you went there? I do. So I'm sure you do, yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Do you and remember? I think the words- You're a founding member, right? I am. Okay. Second in line. Um, I think mostly it's word of mouth. Like Linda, this other gal and I started, we came to the first meeting and we've just talked to people through other um, associations we have yeah. in common and you spread the word. I mean, and we must be pretty awesome because we just keep getting more people. Not the fact that the disease is so prevalent, although the more you're in this group, the more you realize how many people hmm. it affects that you wouldn't have known otherwise. Right, um, right. But everybody that I can tell loves the group and you're always wanting to share that with other people who might benefit from it. And there are a lot more than I think we have in our group and we would love to have more people join because it's just such a huge benefit. Well, when, when Mary mentioned this interview to me, at first, and I have to be fully transparent, I was thinking, absolutely, let's have this conversation, but I didn't really understand what we we're gonna be talking about. What are we promoting? What are we, and so now I get it now. I get where we're, we're raising awareness to the support group for like, to, you know, both of you said, you know, there's other people out there who could really benefit from this as you guys have, yes. right? You need to raise the awareness about MS too, because very few people really understand it. Yeah. Because as Suzanne said, you don't look sick. 
Right. You don't look like you're so exhausted you can't take another step. Yeah. So the fact that the group is out there, and it might be that somebody hears about the group and says, oh, my, my niece has MS, yeah. maybe she'd be interested. Right. So it's just, it's really important. The word of mouth is the biggest yeah. um, benefit. And taking that first step for that, you know, just we'll go with that fictitious niece that you mentioned there, yeah. you know, ta yeah. her, her taking that first step and in, 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 in walking into that yeah. church. Where, where is it meetings again? It's the Church, church, of, church Christ. of Christ. In South Lyon, in Pan right. Pan yeah. Um, it is hard. No matter what you do with this disease, if you go to a meeting that somebody's presenting at, or, you know, I can tell you a lot of different times that I've done that, and it's been a first for me. Maybe I was like newly diagnosed and I wasn't using a walker. Yeah. But everybody, a lot of other people were, and I was just like, you know, it really, it's it's hard. It's like you're staring it in the face, but you don't really know how to um, process it. Right. Because you don't know what you don't know what your life's going to be like. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's a very unpredictable disease. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really take the same path for any two people. And earlier we were talking about the name of the organization, Myelin Sheath, and you explained to me what it is. And, and would you mind describing that again for those who are watching what this name describes? Sure. So the Myelin Sheath... And you can take as much time as you want. We got all day. Because <laughs> okay. it might, right? It might. It could. Um, so and I'll apologize in advance because sometimes we drop words. Like we have a word and we know what it is and it's right here, but it won't come out of my gotcha. mouth. So if I freeze up, it's because I've, I've dropped a word. Gotcha. Um, but I'm going to try not to drop any words All right. right now. Um, so the myelin sheath is the coating on our nerve endings. So it's sort of like this cord on this cable right. um, or on this microphone. Um, so myelin would be this plastic coating right here. Mm -hmm. And in um, MS, our immune systems attack that coating on our nerve endings and it disrupts the signals from going from your brain to parts of your body where your brain needs to tell your body what to do like right. your brain needs to tell your legs to walk when you want to walk when those signals get disrupted your legs aren't going to pay attention to what your brain says to do right. because the signal isn't getting there yeah. um, and so that's the name of our group is mind over myelin sheath like we have power over yeah. our messed up myelin sheath Gotcha. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, you're, you said you're in, you live in South Lyon, right? I do. And where, where are you from? Green Oak, South Lyon. Oh, yeah, right in the same area. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. And so you say uh, members, you have members of this group from All quite a world. radius, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and so what we're doing, of course, is in thank you, Mary, for you know, introducing us to this is to so we can get this on our little channel right and pop it onto youtube and share that mm -hmm. and share 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 on social media so that more people right. can be aware of this and wherever they are in the world right whether it's the south lion area or mm -hmm. anywhere right right yeah have yeah. you belonged with other support groups in the past i did um very early on there was one running out of brighton which disbanded eventually okay. um, I think primarily because it was an evening meeting and you know seven o'clock hits and you're not going to function very well yeah. um, and at the time I was working too so it was kind of a, a rush yeah. to meet but um, yeah this is I don't need to diss anybody but this is an amazing group I mean and that's another one of those situations where I walked in perfectly able-bodied and I saw a lot of people in the same situation as I am now. Hmm. And it was very, um, it was very difficult to be amongst what I thought might end up being me, which, right. you know, um, so I didn't feel like I had that much in common with them at that point. Right. Other than the fact that I was told I had the disease. Right. It's exactly how I felt on my first day. Mm -hmm. So how long has the group been around? Two and a half. Yeah, right. be three years. You've been January. around for pretty much the beginning of it. I have. Yeah, and you start. You started going when? Mm, not about too a long year. after that. About a year, I think. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. All right. Maybe longer because it was before COVID. Yeah. Oh yeah. So it's, maybe almost two years. Okay. Have you guys been able to meet through the whole COVID thing? We did virtual meetings. Yeah, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Thank God for We're virtual really meetings. We're really glad to get back together. I in bet. Person, All right, so you're back in person. You're back in meeting just in person. Started. Awesome. Just, yeah. yeah. Cool.
it's 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 Zoom was great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I love seeing everybody on Zoom, but mm. being in person uh-huh. like mm. puts the cherry on the top. You know, <laughs> it's, it's so much better. And 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 a, I know a lot of um, not a lot, but some of our members are isolated, and this is the social most of the social activity yeah. that they have, and yeah. that they really look forward to. Yeah. So it's it's that. wonderful being back in person. Yeah, and so like we know the venue. It's perfectly accessible. Yeah. So that's one less thing for you to think and plan around, which you have to do wherever you're going to go sure. if you have okay. issues with mobility. Yeah. Um, so it's like an even playing field, and um, it's, uh, I keep saying it's great. But it sounds it, great. It <laughs> so what days do you meet? What times do you meet? We meet on the fourth Sunday of the month. Okay. Um, we're meeting at 3.30. But that's been moved up a little bit because of the space being used by others. Okay. Um, so I don't know if we're going to end up getting back to that original time, but um, yeah, it's once a month. Okay, and on, on 12, Sundays. Twelve fifteen on Sunday. Twelve fifteen now. Gotcha. Okay. Same location, Church of Christ, and um, you know, other than meeting formally in our group meeting, we have done activities where we've met on an opposite night during the week. To, to do some creative projects like our awesome. scarecrow that's our scarecrow in town. All right. Oh, it's really awesome. Cool. Yeah. So you yeah. did that for the pumpkin fest, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So this is the third year. Right? That's cool. Yeah, we had so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was great. It cool. Was, yeah, the creative juices were flowing. Good. <laughs> well, super. Uh, anything else you wanted to add to the interview while we got the camera rolling here? Hmm. I've been talking a lot. You. Yeah. <laughs> um. I can't think of anything else. I mean, we're always open for new members. We, yeah. we welcome them. We want them to come. We want, there's just so much stuff that's shared. Yeah. Like, you know, who's your physician? What treatment are you on? Right. How yes. do you like that? You know, have you had a problem with getting this paid for? You know, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. And just like little personal side stories. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, that's a good point in terms of, you know, what are the types of things that people are going to hear in these conversations. Right, and, and let's debunk some of the... Yeah, there you go. Yeah, not everybody's walking around with a walker, right? right. Not everybody right. is, yeah. Yeah, and MS today is a lot different than the MS 30 years ago when I was diagnosed. Yeah. So, you know, don't get yourself caught up with that. Do what you can while you can before you, you know, like do what you can to yeah. prevent anything advancing. Mm-hmm. That's our biggest, you know, oh, well, I should say it's my biggest thing when people come in that are new, that aren't on medication or, right. you know, they're not as involved in their diagnosis. They need to be educated and they need to prevent anything they can. I mean, like, do what you can to stay where you're at. Mm-hmm. Well, and I will give my friend Sandy here a big compliment because um, Sandy's like our support group mom. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> She is. And she always says, and to this day I remember it because she said it on the very first time I met her, that you have to be your own advocate. And she teaches every single person in the support group that they need to advocate for themselves. Whether that is, you know, if your doctor's not telling you what you need to hear or you don't feel like you're getting the right answers, then you need to advocate for yourself and you need to find a different doctor. And everybody in the group will say, well, this is my neurologist or this is where I go for that. This is where I do physical therapy. Um, So that's been an amazing resource to have everyone help you with that. But Sandy is the first person to tell you that the one thing you always have to do is to be your own advocate. Yeah. If yeah. it's not working for you, fire them. That's what I say. That's Remember. exactly what she says. Okay. I mean, and I'm very respectful of what it took to get where they're at. Yeah. But they're not living my life. Right. I'm living my life, and I need for it to be the best life it can be mm-hmm. in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah. Well said. And I think, good message. <laughs> and I think a lot of people, um, especially when they're younger, and I can say that because I've earned it, but... <laughs> I think they're afraid. They have a lot of respect for physicians, and I do too. But they need to use their voice. As she said, hey, don't be afraid to speak up. It's your life. It depends upon it. So, yeah. Mm, good message. Yes. 
Cool. Well, I really appreciate meeting both you, Beyonce and Madonna, for this interview today. So those are your... I look a little different now. But, you know. And next time, just have my fan available because... Yeah, we can do that. Oh, Thank yeah. You. Yeah, you didn't get the worm blown on. I did not. We'll and work I, on that for the next no, one. I appreciate right? that. I really appreciate being able to share all that information with you because we need more people to join us. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate um, you guys coming on and sharing mm -hmm. your message and, and helping uh, helping to raise some awareness yeah, of this group. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate nice meeting it. you both. Thank nice you. You too. too.